My father was a journalist for about 30 years. He worked for the Cleveland Plain Dealer, was the Washington bureau chief for a decade and a half, so we lived in D.C. for most of my life. But he was my role model as a writer. Not that he wrote creatively necessarily, that wasn't his job, but he wrote every day and he wrote very clearly. His prose was very clean and very appealing. And so he was my first role model. My grandmother loved poetry and really instilled in me a love for poetry and all kinds of literature. So I was inspired by her. And then I read as a young person, especially when I was in junior high school and feeling particularly alienated from the world. So it was a good time to pick up a book and start to become a lifelong reader. And I learned how to become a writer first by reading a lot of great books. And when I was in college, I joined my college newspaper, the Harvard Crimson, and wrote it's a, it's a daily newspaper, and so I wrote just about every day for the newspaper, thinking that I'd f follow my father's footsteps and become a journalist. But what it gave me was outstanding training in writing, more than any class could possibly give me. Apologies to my fellow professors and myself, but writing for the newspaper was just great training ground for any kind of writing, journalism or creative writing, because it allowed me to practice often. I thought I'd be a journalist and because that's what I knew, that's what my father was. And I loved writing and I guess what I didn't like about journalism was the immense amount of reporting that was necessary to write a very good story. To be a great journalist you have to be a terrific reporter. I think j journalism is 90% about reporting and 10% about writing and I really wanted to flip that formula and make it more about the writing than about the research. But I wanted to give back to the world and I wanted a different kind of experience so I applied to the Peace Corps and I was fortunate enough to get in. I was sent to Guatemala which I honestly really knew very little about. And what a great country to be placed in because the people were extraordinarily generous especially toward me learning Spanish. I didn't take Spanish in college. I had to learn it there. Basically it was confined to teaching farmers how to build grain storage silos, small ones, that could hold their harvest each year because the tradition in Guatemala is to string their corn in the rafters of their homes, which make it very vulnerable to rats and insects, but in a silo they could prevent rats and insects from eating it. So some of the farmers ad adopted the technology. But as I said, I had other projects, including teaching in the schools, coaching a girls' basketball team, serving on a health committee. It was a great opportunity to do many things. And I learned Spanish and I met great people and I had terrific experiences in a beautiful but terribly sad country because during my time there, it was toward the end of their 36 year long civil war. And as you can imagine, a 36 year long civil war is gonna have devastating consequences to people. And it certainly did to everyone I knew. I wrote my first book, The River of Lost Voices, stories from Guatemala based on experiences or people I knew in the country and I told stories that I made up essentially but are based on stories that I heard or experienced there and that launched my creative writing career. I was in the Peace Corps for about three years the first time. It's usually a two-year tour plus four months of training but I extended it a bit so I was there almost three years. Then I did grad school and then I went back after grad school to be a Peace Corps trainer for eight months. I did that in the same program in which I'd been a volunteer. So I taught new volunteers how to teach farmers how to build these grain storage silos, which was a neat experience to be able to convey what I'd learned to other volunteers coming into the country. And so I had a, a life-altering encounter or experience with clinical depression that I would not wish on my worst enemy, if, if I did indeed have a worst enemy. It's funny where we get our subject matter as writers. And I suppose, as I look back on it, maybe it was some kind of perverse wish because I'd kind of come to the end of what I was writing about in terms of Guatemala. But out of that experience, which was incredibly difficult for me and also for my family, I emerged okay. I survived it and decided that I ought to write about it because there's a lot of interesting things to say about it, a lot of experiences that could, can be, could be conveyed and 
many people have had encounters with depression in one form or another and might be soothed by my stories or might be interested, might find themselves in it, might recognize something. And so I wrote these stories partly based on my experiences, but also based on my imagination about what could happen or what these characters could have experienced since I was only one person and had my own experience that I knew very well and had talked to other people and knew about their experiences. But really fiction is in large part an act of imagination. So I imagined the kinds of experiences people would have around depression that were distinct from mine. And I wrote The Incurables, which is a series of stories about, in large part about people suffering from mental illness and how they cope with it.